What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch with SC Weather. I hope y'all been having a great Saturday. We're going to talk about some weather here, obviously, um, like we mentioned in the video yesterday. We're going to begin to talk more and more about what looks like to be another severe weather event, potentially, for mid to late next week, next week for the Deep South into the Southeast. So um, this could affect all areas in the Deep South. I'm talking about Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, uh, not Arkansas, but yeah, potentially Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Georgia. Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, et cetera, Florida. So um, this could affect the entire South. So um, this could be another bad event, but we're going to talk about what we know now. Uh, a lot's changed from yesterday, but um, one thing that has stayed consistent is the consistency of the threat for next Wednesday through Friday for severe weather for sure. Who knows, it might kick up another e-learning day for your kids. So definitely be aware, be weather aware, and we're going to break down what we know. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Uh, talk weather here on the eastern U.S. I reside here in South Carolina, Columbia. So uh, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you do. I'm a storm chaser also. And also I like to do this thing where I like an opportunity to pray for you guys. If you all any, have anything that I can pray about in my prayers tonight or anything about anything that anybody else could pray about, uh, definitely drop in the comments. If it's unspoken, say that too like to use this as a platform for people to reach out for people in need. Uh, someone's always struggling with something. So let's talk about the weather. So <clears throat> Storm Prediction Center, guys, there's, there's nothing showing up past four days. So day four, as you see, day five, probability too low, probability too low, through all the way through day eight. So um, it's not it's highlighting, obviously, through day through four through eight, if they're going to pinpoint any kind of area of concern, they'll drop the 15%, as you can tell in the legend. Then it might upgrade to a 30%, and then it gets in, inside day four, and then they start using the marginal slight, et cetera, uh, risk if it really looks like something that's going to unfold. So I think we'll wake up tomorrow. I have a feeling it was a 15% chance at day five or six, but we'll see. Not sure if they're ready to uh, really, really uh, hone in on this yet, the Storm Prediction Center, but I don't see why not because it's been showing up since we ended the last severe weather threat a few days ago. So. Um, I think we're going to wake up tomorrow, and it's, uh, the professionals, the Storm Prediction Center is going to be all over this and start really talking about this. So we're going to look at the GFS because uh, the GFS and the European are all over this, the potential for a severe weather event. So what's going on here? We'll get through here in time. <clears throat> There's really some kind of uh, upper-level low is really kind of is going to combine with some other energy, really pump up some showers potentially for the low country, South Carolina, the coastal areas of Georgia. We'll see how that happens, but... It's not really a big deal. What we're watching here is what happens as we get into early to late uh, to mid part of next week. Get a low pressure going here. It goes on and curves north. doesn't really influence our weather much. And the trough digs a little bit further, and you get a low pressure right here. And, uh, you know, a low pressure injects its way northeast. And what happens here is the classic setup for severe weather. It's kind of the same thing that happened this past week. As uh, this low pressure forms, it begins to track northeast, and it leaves um, it has a trough digging behind it. Um, you know, not much cold air behind it, but as that's happening, it's throwing in moist air, uh, humid air, um, uh, th thermodynamics that really can really is looking like to be severe weather elements. Uh, you know, when, when this happens, when you get, and I mentioned this in a lot of my videos. It's, it, it's it's honestly, it's not this cut and dry, but when you have a low pressure in the spring that go, goes on and cuts up through the Ohio Valley, and you have the southeast sitting uh, south of that, southeast of that, that normally means you're going to get some kind of uh, intense weather, whether that be heavy rain. It all kind of depends on where this low pressure sits. So this is perfect position. Not perfect, but it, it's a great position for severe weather. So you're going to get a moist flow out the Gulf, and you're going to get cape, and you're going to get warm temperatures before cooler air kind of comes in behind this. So that's basic ingredients for severe weather. So that happens, and uh, that moves on through, and that's that. <coughs> and that is the system we're talking about. So we get going in time, and um, sorry about my dog if you all hear it. And what happens here is here's that system that really begins to go through, and as it kind of pumps through the cape, convective energy, uh, what you need for severe weather, an element that you need, begins to build. And as you can tell, there's a stout cutoff behind it because that's a cold front. 
moving through and it's sweeping through and it, and, and it looks showing some pretty high cape all the way up through Virginia now and it really builds here so you know this is already showing more cape at this at, at, at the same range than it was for the last severe weather event at this range so this I'm not saying this could be a more intense or, or worse event but I am saying that uh, the signal this far out is the same if not better for the event that happened last week this far out so this looks like a pretty strong signal and one thing that I've noticed and a lot of other weather enthusiasts and meteorologists have noticed is when you have a look for severe weather uh, it tends to stick around on some models unlike winter storms five days out when you have a winter storm showing up five days out you have a less than 50 percent chance of you even getting a flake so here you go i'm showing you dew points here now what happens here here comes the low pressure right here and uh, as you check out the dew points surge into the 60s and 70s louisiana mississippi this is where the severe weather event is going to begin to unfold thursday if it does um you have this is not temperatures these are dew points so this is some pretty humid air um so it's this classic dew point surging ahead of the cold front just like it did um third uh, wednesday and thursday across the southeast similar setup this is kind of what happens a warm front lifts up it throws areas into a warm sector and then the cold front sweeps through around uh through what builds in that warm sector you, you could have supercells you could have some kind of squall line you could have both that's what alabama experience was both so <clears throat> this far out you can obviously already tell uh something is brewing this is the uh, supercell composite uh, <clears throat> simulation here so it goes from one to 50 <clears throat> so basically you'll see the values increase here um, we going in through in time we're getting into Thursday uh, afternoon evening and look at the look at the values begin to rise into the teens here um, don't really get caught up in the numbers down here just know that there is a threat for supercells ahead of this line and it goes on and moves and I think it just like it does in the event last week it turns more into a linear threat as you get into the Carolinas but I tell you what this linear threat looks intense, the potential for a strong line of storms. So um, this this threat really for the Carolinas may be more so overnight Thursday into Friday. But the timing, it could slow down, it could speed up. Um, so don't 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 hear Thursday afternoon or overnight Thursday into Friday and really have it set in stone in your head. This can really tweak some. So we're getting into um, Monday, temperatures begin to rise. It's been a cool weekend so far across the southeast. It will continue to be. But as you get into 18Z for Tuesday, temperatures continue to rise. And um, look, look how warm we start to get into we get into Wednesday. And then we get into Thursday and, you know, check out temperatures. Um, I have to watch that cooler air. This might have some kind of influence. I don't know if that's in response to some convection that's already in this area. But this is right here, uh, Thursday. Uh, right here is where we could get some uh, strong storms developing, severe storms. And we're going to watch this. But as it gets going through in time, see if I can get the cursor back over here. Um, the temperatures really surge ahead of this front. Um, and we're in the 70s. It's showing to be in the 70s in a lot of areas overnight Thursday into Friday. as some kind of moist sector, sector or warm sector uh, rides through. So we have to watch out and check out the cooler, more stable air working on its way around behind the front. This is a classic look right here to me for um, severe weather for the southeast. It really is. You have warm, moist air, humid air riding, uh, you know, ahead, surging ahead um, of the cold front. And uh, you're going to have severe weather out ahead of it. So this is, it just looks classic to me for some kind of severe weather. Now, this is the energy helicity. Basically, it combines Cape with uh, uh, the helicity, which is a tornado threat. So um, it's trying to pinpoint if there's going to be any kind of threats for tornadoes. So we get going in time. We get into Wednesday. We get into Thursday. And check it out here. Right ahead of the cold front, you have a, a spike in an area that um, is going to have a high percentage for the potential for some spin-ups, some tornadoes. But check it out as it gets into Carolinas which my computer would cooperate a little bit. Um, it spikes a little bit into the Carolinas, but turns more into a linear squall line, line of storms, whatever it may be. So this is the uh, European. I showed the GFS to start off. I know I normally show the European, but I'm going to show the Cape here towards the end of the video. But you see what I'm talking about. Look at the Cape rising. Um, 
this is some pretty high cape. This is showing at this range higher cape than it was, like I said, at the same range for the last event. So uh, it really begins, and it doesn't go away. After you get some cooler airs, you get looks like another spiking cape, and we'll have to watch out what happens after this system system, because you could get another active piece of the jet that really amps up some more severe weather. So that might not be it. What, what's going on here is basically you're having some kind of you're having a big <coughs> dip um, a storm system digging right here. When you have it dig out here, that usually means severe weather um, for Mississippi, Alabama, the Carolinas. The deep south depending on where this dips right here now if it was dipping right here then it would probably be more severe weather just for the carolinas if it was dipping more out here then maybe more of a severe weather for the western deep south so it just depends on where this is digging right here and where this low pressure kind of rides up so that definitely is a look for severe weather where it's digging where it's at right at this second but i'll show you kind of what the um, the European is showing right now. We're getting into Tuesday. We're getting into Wednesday, and uh, right there, um, that that looks like a mess. Uh, you know, it's not going to show individual supercells like you do when you get in the short range. We're not even close to the short range yet, but it is showing some heavy activity, and then it turns into some kind of line of intense storms that we get into Friday morning for the Carolinas. So it's going to be interesting to watch. You know, uh, for sure. So um, I'm going to keep making updates on this video because I want y'all to be aware because we've been, we're going to talk, we've been talking about this. We're going to talk about it a lot over the next few days because it's our next major uh, weather event. So y'all stay tuned and uh, I probably will not be chasing this one that, you know, when you make them big kind of chases, I have a full-time job here. My full-time job is not storm chasing like some of these other guys are, have the luxury of doing. Um, but I will be chasing more this year, but I definitely cannot do two weeks in a row where I drive, uh, you know, 800 to 1,000 miles in 24 hours. So, But y'all have a blessed evening, and I'll keep y'all updated on this, and uh, thank y'all for tuning in.